Иван, шут! At what? At the greatest enemy, дебил! Hmm, who is my greatest enemy? Ah, I am my greatest enemy. I will shoot at myself. Хорош, Иван, молодец! You are truly a Russian soldier. In this video you saw the poor quality of some Russian missiles. Supposedly this system was surface-to-air missile system so they didn't have to put in the coordinates. It supposedly has to guide itself and it came back. Now if it's surface-to-surface -surface missile system then they have to put in the coordinates and perhaps they made a coordinate mistake putting in their coordinates. NATO statistics shows us that Russian Kalibr cruise missile accuracy in Ukraine is 50%. Only half of the Kalibr cruise missiles that Russia shoots out connect to the targets. The other half explodes in mid-air or misses their targets completely. And each of these missiles is actually irreplaceable for Russia right now due to sanctions. But why do they miss? They rely on Russian military satellite grid to find and pinpoint their targets, but this satellite grid is decades old, simply not able to pinpoint targets. It gets the area right. But with missiles you need pinpoint accuracy, otherwise the missile loses its main purpose, to be a precision weapon. But unfortunately those 50% that do connect to their target do a lot of damage. Yesterday a Russian cruise missile hit a, a shopping mall in Kremenchuk in Ukraine. There was over a thousand shoppers inside at the moment of impact. The mall was about 250 kilometers away from the front line in central Ukraine. So away from the fighting, Russia is using their cruise missiles as a terror weapon. Much like Nazi Germany used their V1 and V2 rockets at the end of the war to terrorize Britain. As much as we know right now, at least 18 people were killed and tens and tens were injured. I will bring you the craziest videos from Ukraine, but before we do that, let's thank the Patreons. These are the people who allow me to do what I do, because these videos are dangerous to show, YouTube demonetizes them. And I understand that you cannot advertise anything next to these videos. Thanks to Patreons, I can keep going. I'll be naming them as an Estonian, my friends. Paul Ozolin, Matti Metsikko. That is Finnish. Mets means a forest in Estonian, so you gotta be from Finland. Jamie Dotson, Anna Britton, Karlie Svete. Swede as Sweden, uh, but actually Sweden in Estonian is Rootsi. Tommi Petteri, Edvard Lapine, Mark Daniels, Martin Jot Dubois. I think French say like Tubu. You're gonna be Dubois. Jabber Voki. Tim Burton. Ooh, I love your movies, man. Thanks for becoming a patron. Robert Jonasar. Rian Putler. Thank you to all of these people for becoming a patron of the channel and allowing me to do what I do. If you like the channel, Patreon link is in the description below. Thank you, my friends. In this video, um, well, shit happens. This Russian soldier has decided to fertilize Ukrainian soil with his uh, fertilizer, but Ukrainians have something else to say about it. Boom! Knocked out cold, my friends. This next one is a serious one. We have a long video of Azov Battalion Special Forces doing work. First of all, how do we know the Special Forces? Well, look, they have silencers. Ukrainians and Russians, both infantries, have deficits of almost everything. And silencers are not a prime necessity. So if you have it, you are very well equipped. But I would point out some things in this video and you have heard them before. The firing sectors unfortunately are all messed up. They shoot over each other's head. There's a comrade laying down in front of the dude and he's shooting single shots over his head. Well, I'm glad he doesn't shoot automatic fire, but even single shot. It's blue on blue possibilities off the charts here. We can hear a chopper flying by, which is interesting. You can see everybody going a step lower and staying underneath the trees. We can assume it's a Russian chopper. But I gotta hand it to them. These are brave men. They charge towards the enemy and you can see the dude shooting while he's running. That means it's a, it's a very desperate situation. They need to cover the ground and suppress the enemy. So they run and shoot. Usually you don't do that as a squad. You run, you take a lower position, you shoot. They run and suppress at the same time, which is, you know, not ideal. 
they find this one small bunker, they hit a grenade in it and it explodes and immediately the dude goes in it and the Russian soldier in it was knocked out cold by the grenade. Gosh, I love saying that. The Ukrainian soldier says something like he will, he will never get up or like he's sleeping forever, something like that. And he takes the Kalashnikov because the truth is that Ukrainian infantry is lacking everything, starting with weapons. So yeah, they take all of the weapons and everything they can find from the Russians. You have seen me mention these mysterious fires happening in Russia in more than five videos now. These fires are truly mysterious. We don't know how they start and who starts them. Like there's no videos going around of people starting fires or I wish there was like a video going around where we could see how they start, but there's none of them. They're truly mysterious. This is in Berm in Russia and this is a military enlistment facility. This is the place where uh, civilians go to get forced into military service or to get enlisted. I think we can tell that this young man does not want to go to war against Ukraine. How he just takes his body with him and takes a Molotov cocktails and sets the place ablaze. You know, a regular Tuesday in Russia. In this video we can see something truly mind-blowing. The drone you can see and the dude casually filming. He's not afraid, he's just a drone. He's filming the drone and the drone is actually Alibaba drone. It's very cheap. It varies between a few hundred dollars to a thousand dollars per piece. So it's a very cheap drone. And it flies around peacefully only until it suddenly goes full haywire and kamikazes into the Russian oil facility. And boom, there's a fireball. That's a beautiful sight. This is an oil refinery in Rostov. Rostov is bordering Ukraine. The Ukrainians can use these cheap Alibaba or Amazon drones, put some explosives onto them and just fly them into these refineries. Repair of the, these damages is very, very costly. In this next video, we can see a Russian tank platoon consisting of three tanks just minding their own business, you know, plowing the Ukrainian fields with their tracks. But the first tank leads them directly into a Ukrainian anti-tank minefield and boom, it diffuses the first mine with itself. Explosives diffused. Comrades, you're free to pass, I took out the first mine. In this video, we can really experience the reality of Russian cannon fire. These troops are in a Russian ammunition storage area, storage warehouse or facility. You can see the ammunition boxes when suddenly Ukrainians start raining down hell upon them. These troops are very lucky because somehow they survived and they ran away from the ammunition boxes and the ammunition boxes immediately caught on flame and exploded. They're wearing sneakers and their sweatpants are rolled up, you know, no, top-notch first-class special forces of Russia indeed. Boys like this will go straight into Ukrainian captivity. They will be tried upon for war crimes they committed. My friends, HIMARS are in Ukraine. United States has delivered high-mobility artillery rocket systems. US has delivered at least four and they will deliver more. These weapons are incredibly precise. We have videos of them doing work. In this video, you can see the aftermath of the first big HIMARS attack. Russians thought their command posts are safe in Izium because Ukrainians do not have precise enough weaponry to hit them. But thanks to HIMARS now, two command posts in Izium were hit. Tens of officers knocked out cold. HIMARS are changing the game. How do you say HIMARS? HIMARS? Hi HIMARS? I don't know, I'll say HIMARS, I'm Estonian. They're mounted on a lightweight truck chassis. They weigh six tons apiece. There are several different variants, but the one US sent to Ukraine has six missiles on it, 227 millimeter missiles. Or actually, a GPS guided rockets with a 45 mile range. US has a long range variant of the same weapon, but they won't send them to Ukraine. Their range is up to 185 miles, but for some reason, United States still does not want their weapons to be used on a Russian soil, so they don't send the long range weapon. I don't understand this. It has happened, my friends. Severodonetsk city has fallen to the Russian troops. Ukrainians pulled back to Lysychansk, which is just over the river of Zverodonetsk. Uh, Russians have not been able to cross the river in three months. They have tried countless times. Lysychansk sits on a high ground looking down on Zverodonetsk, making it very easy for Ukrainian artillery to pinpoint and hit targets. 
Ukrainians are saving their men. They need the men, they know it. They are trying to fight with NATO standards, saving lives and exhausting the enemy. Russians just don't care about their losses. In this video you can see Ukrainians firing three Tochka ballistic missiles. Yes, Ukrainians actually also have ballistic cruise missiles like Russians, but the, all of them come from the Soviet Union times and the stockpile numbers are, are much lower. Tochka was mostly produced in the Soviet Union starting from 1973 and Ukraine started the war with some 500 missiles in its stockpile. Lithuania, yes, one of the Baltic states next to Estonia and Latvia. Lithuania goes beast mode, standing up to Russia like a boss. You know Kaliningrad Oblast, you know the small area that is Russian in, in the middle of Europe. Well, the only way to transport goods there is through trains, you know. Lithuania has banned all of that. No oil, no metals, no minerals. Lithuania bans a huge portion of Russian trains, you know, land transportation of reaching Kaliningrad. Russia cannot supply that oblast anymore because all of the air around it is European Union. It's close to Russia. The sea is close to Russia. There's only a small, tiny gap on the sea that they can supply the oblast with. And they're trying to do it with ships now. But it takes a lot more time and it's much more expensive. And the fact that Lithuania did it as one of the Baltics, as a small state, I love it. That is a David and Goliath story. Russia is furious. It triggered a, a panic buying boom in Kaliningrad because the, the people in Kaliningrad are afraid that they will not get anything anymore. They are cut off from Russia, as they should be. Kaliningrad Oblast should not belong to Russia, it is European. Jens Stoltenberg of NATO has announced that NATO will increase their QRF or Quick Response Force from 40,000 soldiers, which it is now, to 300,000 soldiers. If I was Russia, I would be pissing my pants. Thank you for watching, my friends. Thank you for being on this side of the information war. Take everything you see about this war with a grain of salt. Both sides are using massive propaganda for their own advantage. If you want to support the channel, the Patreon link is in the description below, or you can get the Knock Them Out Cold merch also in the description below. Until my next video, Slava Ukraini!